here are nine things that I think you need to know about boating before you go out and take the plunge. Um, my favourite is number nine because it made the hairs on the back of my neck stick up and I'll never forget that day. However, I'll go through all the reasons what I think you need to know before you buy a boat. If you enjoy our channel with the stupid presenters and the poor editing and poor sound, then please click subscribe on the screen so you don't miss any of the videos. We've got some crackers coming up for you. Anyway, let's get into it. So, number one. Don't worry about how big your mate's boat is. I've learned over the years that every boat is fun, no matter how big or small the boat is and how fast it goes or how slow it goes. Every boat has got its pros and cons. This is definitely an example of when uh, bigger is not always better. Well, most of the time, anyway. Um, no matter how big your boat is, or your mate's boat is, there is always a bigger boat. So always remember that. Number two, don't ever procrastinate about buying a boat. Um, as you know, we're a family business. We've been selling boats since the late 60s when dad started selling fiberglass. Um, and we sell literally hundreds of boats a year and we go to loads of shows. Um, and I think the saddest thing I ever see is meeting the same family year in, year out at the shows like Southampton or what have you, and they still haven't bought a boat. I think I saw one family like five years on the trot. Now, the one thing I've learned from speaking to all these people over the years is don't try and get the perfect boat, the perfect budget and the perfect color. Just buy a boat, buy any boat, buy a dinghy, a canoe, anything. Get your family out on the water. And what I've written here is every customer, well nearly every customer, that has bought a boat has said to me in, pre, in, in the preceding years, there's only one thing I regret, and I regret not doing it sooner. So my advice to you is take their advice get boating I don't it doesn't matter where you buy the boat from from us or anyone else just get a boat and see if you like it most people love it most families love it and then you've started somewhere and you you can move up the ranks to something super special after that third one is don't be scared of driving a boat um, people love to tell you how difficult it is, how many books you have to read, what courses you need to take, um, what qualifications you should have, and they try and make it complicated. Boating is not complicated. It's very, very straightforward. Boating and driving a boat is all about confidence. So don't make it complicated. Don't Give yourself excuses not to do it because you haven't got the time. Get out there and have some fun on a boat. Confidence, I have found, is the most important factor. I remember a few years ago, um, a husband and wife bought this Fairline Targa 34 from me, brand new. So God, that was a while ago because they stopped making those in 05. When the husband was writing the checkout, he was very nervous and that check tells you how long ago. Um, he couldn't write the check because he was so nervous, stroke excited. Um, so his wife signed the check and I didn't think anything of it. But then when we did the handover, um, I usually show it to the husband and the wife's listening and the husband is making more of a, um, a put, um, he's, he's more interested in driving it. But actually in this case, the lady stepped forward and said, I'll be driving the boat. Please, can you show me how to drive it? So I said to the husband, and what are you gonna be doing? And he said, I'm gonna be sitting on the back having a beer. And it was because the wife had more confidence. It's as simple as that. 
So get out there and enjoy. Number four is it's all about fun. If you find yourself taking it too seriously, then chill it out, calm it down. Because if you're not having fun, what's the point? Kids love boating, families love boating, but if you're taking it too seriously, for something that's a, a very privileged thing to be able to do, it's the great freedom to go out there and explore. So if you take it too seriously, chill out and go and have fun. Every trip should be fun. Of course you're gonna have ups and downs like you do with everything, but if you're not having fun, most of the time, you're doing something badly wrong. Number five is don't worry about fuel and costs and everything that's associated with running the boat. I see some people sitting down and working out how much it's gonna to cost to the penny to berth it, to insure it, and put some fuel in and buy this, that, and the other. Now, of course, you need to have a rough idea, but I wouldn't sit there and overanalyze it because it will make you grumpy. My advice to all boaters is, once you've got the boat and you um, are gonna use it for a year, is start a direct debit up that goes into your bank account each month. So it's from your current account to the new boat account and it says boat money. That money goes into a special bank account which you have a card for and you use that card for all the fuel, the maintenance, berthing charges, etc., etc. I found that all my customers that have actually done it this way enjoy boating much, much more. And what's more important than that? Okay. We're now on to my favorite. I think it's number six or nine or something. What are we on? Six, six. Number six, this is critical. Lose your OCD. If you are one of those people that frets and worries and looks for marks on the boat and a rattle and a squeak and a bilge pump and you wanna know wherever, what every little noise and mark is on the boat, I'm not sure boating's for you. I'll tell you why. Boats are handmade in very small numbers. I mean, if you take Princess, for example, they build about three or 400 boats per year for the whole world, the whole world. So 400 new princesses are built in England by 3,000 men per year. Now, with handmade products becomes little inconsistencies little different shadows on the wood, little things that might not be perfect, but they're part of the character of the boat. So if you're one of those people that's got OCD, I would seriously either lose the OCD or think twice about going boating because you've just got to embrace it. It's part of the fun of boating. Life is about enjoying experiences and what better than being at sea with your family. Surely that ranks higher than your OCD and if there's a little mark on the, on the woodwork. I remember a Squadron 55 that I sold in about 2010 and it was the handover day and the customer was really excited. Of course we're really excited. We're handing over this beautiful million pound boat. And um, I got on the boat and the customer walked around and he said, oh, it looks fantastic, James. I'm so excited, I'm so happy. The next thing is I saw him on his hands and knees looking underneath the TV. And it was one of those high-low TVs and the TV was down. So it was literally at carpet level, like right on the floor. I said, um, David, what are you doing looking down there on your hands and knees? He said, I, f I found a little mark on the wood just under the TV. So I got down on my hands and knees and I could hardly see it. And I got up and he said, what do you think? I said, I think you've got to snap out of this OCD. If you're worried a bit about a little mark underneath the TV, you're gonna go crazy. And to be fair, he took my advice and from that day on, he enjoyed the boat and stopped worrying about all the little marks. So lose the OCD. So number seven is go places. Um, your boat is the key to the world. Literally, the rivers, of the UK and elsewhere in the world lead everywhere. You can go anywhere, anytime. So 
my advice is always when you get a boat, don't just stay in the local marina. Don't just sit on board having a cup of tea or a glass of beer or wine. Get on the boat, get the family and say, come on, let's go places. Um, that's the way you bought a boat. You know, what's the point in owning a boat if you don't go places? If you don't want to go places, go and buy a villa or a house or a flat. A boat is a machine which will take you to all these exciting places. And that is the bug of boating. I do practice what I preach. Um, when I go boating, um, more recently I go to Mallorca, I get my family, um, Sarah and the three children, and we get on a boat in Calador, which is one of our favorite places, and we go to Ibiza, we go to Menorca, we circumnavigate the island. And do you know what? Anyone can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So get a boat and go places and discover the world. Number eight, buy the boat you want as soon as you can. What you think costs a lot of money today will only cost more later. Many times at boat shows, um, a customer comes to the show, I show him the new uh, Princess V50, which is 750,000 and you know, let's be honest, it's a lot of money. I'm not pretending it's not. Um, I, but I say to them, look, we can get you into a new V50 for 750,000. Um, you've been through the mass, you can afford it. Do you want to do it? Let's go away and think about it. Now I understand that, but then I see them the next year. And I say, have you bought a boat? No, we haven't bought a boat. Um, oh, the V50 looks good. Well, you liked that last year. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Okay, it's now 810 because inflation's running at 4% or whatever it is with the um, cost of materials going up. And then they say, well, last year I could have bought it for 750. I said, yes, you could, but you didn't buy it last year. And unfortunately now it's more money. Um, and it gets to a point where sometimes I've had the odd person say, I can't afford that anymore. Um, I could afford it last year, but now I'm ready, I can't afford it. So if you find a boat you like and you can afford it, then my advice is get out there and buy it. Buy it from whoever. You can buy it from us if you want, but buy it, get it, enjoy it. Don't sit on your hands and do nothing because you'll just regret it because the years keep on ticking by. So that's a good one. Okay, so uh, it's the last one, so that must be number nine then. Um, and this is probably the most important message I can give to all of you uh, watching this. And I've said this to people literally hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, boating is emotional. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense. Um, you can't justify it. Um, and the reason why you can't justify it, because the experience is magical. Um, and I think the best way I can put this into words is to describe a day I had out boating with my family. And that was, I was on a, um, a Squadron 58, I was in the Solent, I was on the flybridge. Uh, it was a, a mixed weather day. We had s sunshine and, and showers. And we were heading past the Needles round from Southampton to, I think we're going to um, Paul or somewhere like that. Anyway, um, we came out, the, the needles I remember was on my left, um, my wife Sarah was sat next to me, the kids were sat next to me here because those squadrons had that kind of seating all around the helm, the upper helm on the flybridge. And the sun came out, I was doing about 15, 16 knots, the sun came out, it lit up across the needles, all the needles lit up and it just beamed onto us and I could feel the heat on my skin. Music was playing, I think it was the kink, sunny afternoon or something. And I just got shivers, not from the cold, but shivers down my spine and I had goosebumps because I had just truly experienced something magical. And it's utterly priceless. Um, I'll never forget that moment boating um, and that's why I think people love boating so much so um, that's my last one 
it's emotional, lo not logical. Don't try and make too much sense out of it. Just go out there, get a boat, and enjoy. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you're enjoying our videos. If you do, click the button, and we'll make some more videos for you in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.